The Soul Redeemer, Chapter 13D, Belial and the Broken Heart. Tears of joy and relief flowed down both ladies' faces, and they thanked Jesus for his redemption. Nicole saw the vision of Brandy's heart again. It was still in Jesus' hands, still broken, shattered, and crushed. But there were no demons tormenting it, and no shadow blocking the light. And what light? Nicole had heard of God's glory light. She knew it was his presence showing up in a tangible way. And when glory light shone, amazing things happened. Brandy, I see that Jesus is ready to do something in your heart. Do you feel, see, or hear anything? Nicole asked. I hear Jesus calling my name, but he's calling me Anna, not Brandy. Do you know why he's calling you Anna? Anna's my real name. When I was trafficked, they changed it to Brandy. Anna, that's amazing, Nicole said. Do you know what the name Anna means? No, do you? I do. I happen to believe that names are very important, and I often look them up to see what they mean. I remember that Anna means favor or grace. Brandy looked those words up in the dictionary and then looked at Nicole in wonder. Do you know what this means? God wants me. He's always wanted me. The favor part means that God approves of me, supports me, and chooses me. The grace part means that he's given me the gifts of his love, mercy, and favor. And power. He's given me power to live for him. And he's made me into something lovely and beautiful. I remember my grandmother cursing my name and telling me that it was a stupid name and that she didn't know why my mother picked it out for me. But now I know God chose that name for me and for some reason she listened to him. Nicole saw the vision of Brandy's heart again. The glory light was still shining on it and she noticed that it had been reshaped, and instead of being held together by thin red strings of Jesus' blood, it was stitched with strong red stitches and was also held together with a solid covering or casing of Jesus' blood. Even though it was not completely healed, it had been made much stronger in such a short time. Anna, Nicole said, I would like to anoint you with your real name if that's okay with you. Please! They stood to their feet, and Nicole anointed Anna's head. Lord Jesus, thank you for naming Anna as a baby, for, re for revealing your love for her now, for beginning the healing process of her heart. Brandy, in Jesus' name, we strip you of your identity that was rooted in a broken heart, and we anoint you Anna, whose identity is found in the favor and power of God in love, joy, peace, and hope of Jesus Christ. I dedicate you as Anna, God's beloved daughter. The presence of God was so beautiful that neither woman wanted to look to see what time it was. But finally, Nicole saw that they would soon need to head back to the car. Nicole had something she wanted to encourage Anna with before they left. Anna, in Isaiah 61, it says that Jesus came to bind up the brokenhearted. I think it's important to think about what that means. If my finger were to be almost cut off and I had to go to the hospital, they will sew it back on and wrap it up or bind it. Does that mean that it is completely healed? No, Anna said, I think I see what you're getting at. God has stitched and bound up my broken heart, but it's not healed yet, right? You're a quick study, Nicole said. Huh? Nicole giggled. That means you learn fast. So you are right that it is fixed, but not healed. If I use my finger wrongly, I could break it once again. It's the same with your heart. If you listen to the lies or the fear, you could cause the binding to split open. If this happens, you just confess it to God and ask him to restitch and rebind it. The prescription I'm going to give you in taking care of this healing heart is to spend time with Jesus every day by reading your Bible. 
Jesus will talk to you through it, and you need to hear what he has to say to you. Practice listening to his voice. There are two kinds of listening. Listen and wait for him to speak, then listen and obey what he says. Every time you do this, your heart will be growing stronger and healthier. Stay close to Jesus and his spirit, and his love will be able to fill up your heart and will overflow into every part of your body, your soul, and your spirit. And remember, if you don't take your thoughts captive, they will take you captive. It was still dark when they left the hotel and started back towards the parking garage. The streets appeared empty at first glance. Then Nicole noticed a movement on the other side of the road and realized that it was a person lying on a bus stop bench covered with a newspaper. Then she noticed another person under a blanket on the sidewalk against a building. Then another and another. Such a different way of life. Such pain and suffering all around. And yet she felt as if Jesus were even shielding her heart from all the overwhelming feelings associated with these precious people because even though she would love to be able to help them, it was not her mission at the moment. Brandy broke into her reflective thoughts by saying, He did it. What? Jesus trampled Satan under your feet just like you prayed, Brandy replied. It's never been that quiet and uneventful in the hotel, especially at night. She began to tell Nicole stories of screaming neighbors, of death and destruction that took place regularly. And yet they had worked all night long without any noise or any interference at all. Anna and Nicole hugged each other and said goodbye, knowing that they would see each other again. On the bus ride home, before she fell asleep, Nicole was thinking about Belial. She realized that everything apart from Christ is worthlessness, and as people enter into Satan's territory of worthlessness, they become trapped in bondages of worthless things. It didn't even have to be huge things like drugs and sex. She could see how Belial enticed everybody with little things that seemed harmless, but were worthless distractions and all led to the same trap. She remembered something she had told Anna. She had said, Belial and his snares attack the very core of God's love and the work of Jesus Christ on the cross, who willingly sacrificed his own life because of his love and belief in the value and worth of every human being. She suddenly realized the role of Belial in her own life. The Lord showed Nicole how she had fallen under the influence of this principality. He revealed how she was driven to please others because she felt that she would be worth something if she could make others happy. She had never realized that she had believed this lie before. And she saw other lies Belial had thrown her way, worthless lies that stole her time and ruled her life. Nicole confessed her sin to God. She repented of believing Belial's lies, renounced them, and purposed in her heart to ask Jesus what he wanted her to do every day. Her thoughts returned to Anna and their time together. The whole thing had gone so quickly and smoothly that she began questioning God. There had not been a physical manifestation of demons or principalities. Had she imagined all this? Was the strong man's power over Anna really broken? Had Belial really gone? God didn't answer in the way that Nicole expected. She must have drifted off to sleep because she was suddenly awakened to a very evil, angry presence hovering directly in front of her. In a deep, guttural voice, it growled, You can't have her! She's mine! Without considering where she was, she shot right back at him. Anna belongs to God, not me, and you can't have her back. The presence left, and Nicole became very aware of the stares of the other people sitting nearby. Oops, she had answered out loud and could feel the disapproving stare of the woman in the seat next to her, so she turned and gave her a very sweet smile. The lady drew her magazine a little closer to her face, and as she turned her body as far away from Nicole as she could, she heard her say something about the world and nuts. Nicole couldn't help but smile. 
She knew God's answer to her question was what their work was that their work had been effective. She had learned that prayers prayed according to God's heart are tangible things to him, and that when he answers, he answers in tangible ways. Her faith in God's authority and power had grown by leaps and bounds. Nicole arrived home exhausted, but very fulfilled. That night at 3 a.m., all the smoke detectors in the house went off. Nicole jumped out of bed and yelled for Jake to get up. As soon as they went into the living room, the alarm stopped. When Nicole realized that there was no smoke or fire, the thought went through her head that somebody was mad. They got back in bed and immediately they went off again and quit as soon as Nicole entered the living room. The third time the smoke detectors went off, she had no doubts that Belial was trying to come against her and that he was so stinking full of hell fire he was setting off her smoke alarms. She said, Jake, we need to pray. The devil's mad and is trying to get in here. Jake was so sleepy he would have slept through the alarms if Nicole would have let him and he certainly didn't feel like praying. But because he knew he wouldn't be allowed to sleep until they prayed, he groggily got out of bed and followed her again into the living room. They asked God to set heavenly boundaries of protection around Anna, their home, family, pets, property, finances, and ministries to cover them in Jesus' blood, and then they went back to bed and slept soundly the rest of the night. This encounter with Anna and the events of the night increased Nicole's desire and burden for a worship and ministry house. She knew it was going to take a lot of work for Anna to keep her freedom because this enemy was ragingly angry and he was a relentless stalker. She wished she knew of a place that Anna could visit for a short period of time to help her in her adjustment period of learning to renew the spirit of her mind that would give her heart time to heal in a safe place. For now, she would claim the truth found in 1 John 4.4. 4. You are of God, little Anna, and have overcome them, because he who is in Anna is greater than he who is in the world. Nicole began to pray more fervently that God would open something up. She was also beginning to realize that a home like that would need many strong, healed, and delivered people of God to minister to the 24-7 needs and to maintain it. As hard as it was to admit, Nicole didn't know of anybody near her who even had the understanding of healing and deliverance that this would require. She felt so isolated in this area of ministry, and she needed an army. So she began praying that God would raise up his people, an army of intercessors. Yes, that was exactly what was needed, intercessors. Nicole was beginning to understand that no one could go to battle unless they were connected in the deepest way with Jesus. That realization changed the way Nicole prayed. For what good would a home do if there was no one to run it?